Mm, g'day Tragic here, welcome back to Pathfinder, this is Wrath of the Rune Lords and we are doing, uh, what, the Wardstone Patrol. Now I've gone through all the intro and the lore stuff in the previous videos, let's get straight into this. Ya blammo, ya blammo for the Blessing deck and let's draw. Okay, what you got for us? Ya boom! Blast Vortex. Okay, this is another one of these crazy promo cards. Look at that, 19. Uh, we, we're not, we're not going to... I mean, this is a great card. I'd love to have it in my deck. But the uh, fact is, we only have D6s. And I'd have to spend a heap of blessings to get it. And I'm just not going to bother. So, discard. And we don't have any... Nothing in hand. We've got no blessings, so we can't continue. So I'm going to cast Dohan, which is the horsey horse. And I'm going to go clippity clop over to the armory. It allows us to move at the end of the turn. And I'm just going to bounce between the armory and the family tomb with that guy until uh, this girl here starts to reveal monsters for him to kill with the mace. I'm talking about, uh, not the mace, the, uh, the lance. I'm talking about the lance. We're going to get rid of both of these because we've got the full plate anyway. Uh, and let's draw two. Oh, long sword and improvised dinosaur. So we've got plenty of gas over there. Okay, crow, your boom. Now crow is at the guard post again, which means he has to fight corrupted guards every turn before he starts. And that's not really an issue for him because he's got the quarter staff here which is a six plus one, so a d6 plus one, as well as his uh, melee, which is 12 plus one. So we should be able to do this, I would say. Bam. So even with a pretty horrible roll, uh, four over here, we got over nine. So that's that. Now we can actually do our first exploration. Ooh, a road Eldilion. Okay, so this is another promo card, and we can basically ignore everything on it. The only thing that's really interesting is, if we defeat, we may add this card to our hand, banish the rogue from your hand to explore your location. So it gives us a free exploration whenever we want. Oh, I forgot to use Sage's Journal when I fought the, the Guardsman as well. Anyway, so again, not too hard to kill. We just need to get an 8 this time. So we definitely should do this, I would think. Just. <laughs> okay, we're going to banish that straight away and get another explore. Helm. Okay, this is a Constitution Fortitude 3. Our Constitution Fortitude is actually a D6 plus 2. So basically, on a roll of a 1, we win this, which means we automatically win this. So I'm not going to bother rolling. And we'll discard the Blessing as well, just to get one last explore down. And it's a bat. Excellent. So this is a wisdom survival. Our survival is actually pretty good. We have a d6 plus 3. So this is a 50-50 chance. Except, of course, we don't want that d12 in the mix. What are you doing in the mix, d12? Boom. There we go. Bam. Let's try it again. So it's a 50-50. And it's failed. Okay. Right, now the end of his turn, this is our uh, heavy armor, so we can't use that, or we don't want to use that. Quarter stuff, there's no point, because we've got the quarter stuff of vaulting here, which is way better. We'll keep everything else, and draw two cards. Okay. Sheila is at the cabin. Now, there's nothing fancy going on at the cabin. It's just we uh, can't move. If we leave the cabin, we have to go to a random location, basically. So it's, it slows us down, trying to get out of there. What you got for us? Okay, crossbow, range dexterity five. Now, her dexterity is actually four. So her, her dexterity and her intelligence are both four, which is really lame. So anything that uses intelligence or dexterity, she sucks at and that's an automatic fail. We've got a blessing, so let's use that. Now, here's an interesting thing. Normally, I would use the ally to explore and save the blessing so I have extra dice. But this one here, 
has a special use in this scenario because if you fail a check to defeat a Bane, you may recharge a card that has the Soldier or Hiling trait to re-roll the dice, take the new result. This is super strong. One, it says re-roll the dice. That means re-roll your pool. That means all your blessing and extra dice and all that kind of stuff, they count. You get to roll the whole thing again, take the new roll result. It's awesome. Basically, thematically, we're patrolling the border with this guy here and his little group of soldiers. So any allies that have the soldier trait or the hireling trait have that extra power, which is super, super strong because it, it keeps the all the blessings and everything. So I'm not going to be exploring using recruits. So I'm going to use the blessing is the point. What you got for us? Uh, Hunter's Handbook. Here we go. This is a knowledge test. Again, we've got D4s for this, so that's a total fail. Boom. And we draw two cards. Uh, one card, beg your pardon. Oh, I love this card. It's such a good drawing. This is one of my favorite drawings in the, in the, in the set so far. Reminds me a little of that dog in the labyrinth, you know, who was ridden around by the fox. But uh, it's just an awesome, you know, with the saddle and the armor, little goblin steed. I just love it. Okay, what have we got over here? Now, Anduin is in the Wounded Lands. When you encounter a Bane, you may not play allies on your check. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's advance the Blessing Deck. Can I advance it for her as well? I did. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that she also has a Recruit, which also has that reroll factor. But check this out. It says, if you fail a check to defeat a Bane, and this one says, you may not play allies on your checks. So this power here to re-roll actually occurs after the check has failed, not during the check. So I believe even though she's at the Wounded Lands, she can still use this recruit to do a re-roll. Anyway, let's, uh, let's draw the first card, bam. Ah, oh, Corrupted Crusaders. This is my favorite barrier so far. Basically, it's super easy, especially in the B scenario. You just draw a ally, and then you draw a Corrupted Guard, and then you have to kill him, which shouldn't be hard. It's just a D12 plus a 1, and this gives us a D10. So we only need 9 to kill this guy. And bam, 14. He's gone. So we get to keep the bat as well. I'm going to discard this bat and get another explore down. It's a Cambion. Okay, so he's immune to electricity and poison. And we have to do an Arcane Divine check 9. Oh, but if we fail that, you know, it doesn't matter. It just means we can't use spells that have the attack trait. So who cares? So it's just a 12 combat to defeat. So we have the crossbow. That's giving us a D12 plus one plus a D10. And we have a reroll. So I think it's actually a little bit hard. I don't know. I think I'm going to add a blessing just to, uh, I don't know. Now let's try it. We've got the recruit. Let's do it. Live dangerously, I say. That's what I always say. What's the point of a dice game if you don't play the odds? Beautiful. 13, just made it. I was looking at this dice, it said a 10. I thought, okay, we've done it. <laughs> but uh, I guess we did do it because if this, because as soon as we rolled a 10, even if this was a one, we were going to win because we had the plus one. Whew. <laughs> I feel like I've cheated death. Okay, next. Uh, let's do Blessing of Ascension. What you got for us? Padding armor, constitution, and fortitude two. We have a d6 for that. Should probably get this in our hand, right? Or not. <laughs> uh, we've got one more ascension. Let's do it. Your bamo. Your blamo. Oh, the javelin. Okay, so anyone who watched my <laughs> deck building video, there was a huge big screw up with the javelin. But, you know, now I'm going to get it anyway because it's a dexterity range 4. So all I need to do is a 12 plus 1. And 
Come on. Yep. Bam. Into my hand. Okay, we're now going to do this bloke. Display this card to examine the top card of your location deck. Yoink. Prentice, that's an awesome card. 1d6 to arcane or divine checks. Very cool. Now, the big discarding. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cards in hand. That's the maximum amount of cards. I want to use this javelin. I'm determined to use that, so I don't want to, dis I don't want to discard any of these cards, so I'm not. Okay, next, it is Laura, my little mage. Okay, she is at the Befouled Autol. She's at the Befouled Altar, which is a terrible place. If you fail a check to defeat a monster, discard a card from the Blessings deck. That is bollocks. Plus, we have a henchman to kill, though, if we, uh, if we want to close this location. So, let's do it. First draw of the day, yabam. Oh, Divine uh, Arcane, Arcane 7. So she has an Arcane 12 1. And I'm going to actually spend a blessing here and get a second D12. And the reason is, if we win this, it's like there's no net loss. All I've done is, you know, got a better blessing into my card pool for the deck building at the end. I get a 14, so bam. So even though I spent that, I maybe didn't I didn't need to, but by spending it I assure that I'm getting this into my I, my card pool. Okay, so let's actually spend one now. Bam, what else you got for us? <gasps> it's a Brimorak. It's the bad guy. Okay, so he's immune to electricity, he's immune to fire, and his difficulty is increased by the scenario. All damage he deals is fire damage. After you act, if the check to defeat the Brimorak had the piercing or slashing trait, the Brimorak deals two fire damage to you. Ah, so he's got fire or lava for blood or something. Quite the defense mechanism. But, you know, it doesn't matter. We are using a force missile, which does not have any of those traits. Okay, so that is a D12 plus one plus two D4s. And, hmm, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to play a blessing on that to get another D12. I want to make sure I kill this guy. Easy. So now he is dead. I just need to roll for the force missile. Okay, that's a pass. And now I need to fight the Servitor, not the Servitor, the Cultus of Baphomet to close. So the text doesn't really do anything here because it's not the first exploration, blah, blah, blah. It's just a 10 check to defeat. We'll do a Frigid Blast this time, which is a 12 plus 1 plus 2d4s. And we've got the Recruit if we need but we don't need. Okay, so bam, that is the end of that. Oh wait, let's uh, just roll for our recharging. We need a uh, six, so that is also recharged. Beautiful. And we've closed our first location. Yoink. Very nice. Abyssal wasn't too bad. And now we just go one, two, three, four. Is it? Yeah, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Finally, we have good old Kyra. Now, Kyra is at an awesome location. Basically, there's one monster, two spells, two allies, and four blessings. So if we if we play this right. We should be able, we could burn this entire deck in a single turn and get two closed locations, which would be awesome. Okay, let's draw the first one. Yabamo. Yoink. Ugh. Carbuncle. When you encounter this card, you automatically acquire it, shuffle it into a random character's deck. How annoying. Yabonk. Oh, one. So it goes over here. 
it would have been nice to put that into an Aura's deck and get those spells possibly towards the top that I just recharged. Okay, so let's Blessing of Ascension. Oh, here's an interesting point. I could take a Mythic Charge. So I haven't talked about Mythic Charges. It's a new mechanic. Basically, you can buy Mythic Charges for Blessings of Ascensions. Like, I can discard this to gain a Mythic Charge. Now, you can only carry between turns as many Mythic Charges as your deck number. Now, because this is deck number B, that means at the end of my turn, I have to discard any charges I have. So the only advantage really of getting Mythic Charges in this particular scenario is that I'll be able, during this turn, any Blessings of Ascensions, I'll be able to automatically acquire without rolling. So the thing is, it's a Divine 5 to acquire them, and we have... 12 plus 2, which means we only need to roll a 3 off a d12 to get them anyway. So I'm going to use the blessing to actually explore what you got for us. Ah, a blessing. So this is a divine 5. So again, we only need a 3. Come on. You? Oh, give me. Oh, there we are. Nice. Uh, let's use it straight away. What she got for us? It's another blessing five. Bamo. Anything more than a three, please? Yep. Put that out. Get another one. Yoink. And then we'll do a heals and get all these guys back in our hands. Okay, a knowledge six or a diplomacy eight. Okay, this is an interesting one. I've got knowledge d8 plus 2 and I've got a charisma d6 plus 2 yeah so it's much better to do the knowledge test right so this is a diplomacy 8 so I have to roll a 6 off a 6 to get it with charisma but with intelligence it's a 6 which means I only have to roll a 4 off an 8 bam come on what do we need? Six. Do it. And we get a three. Annoying. So that one doesn't do anything for us. Let's do another explore. Your blamo. Yoink. Okay, it is another blessing. And these are all great blessings. They've all got... Uh, they're all non-basic, which is awesome. Come on. Ten. Beautiful. Play that one as well. Now what you got for us? Yoink. And here it is. So we got all the way down to the fourth cards. And one of them is a monster. And one of them is another ally. So we basically got all the blessings out of that deck. Did we miss a single blessing? I don't think so. One, two, three, four. And none of them basic. That is awesome. Okay, so now we need to actually kill this guy. We do have a fire blade in hand, luckily. So that is a D12 plus 2 plus 2 D4. So we also have Sir Illavan. Reveal this card to add 1 D8 to your check to defeat. Bam. And I'm going to add a Blessing of Ascension to add another D12 just to confirm that I'm definitely going to do that. Probably overkill, but I don't want to miss. Okay, so that's done. Yeah, I feel like that was overkill. <laughs> but I really didn't want to not kill this guy. Uh, we rolled a 7. We needed an 8 to recharge this. Okay, so that's the end of that. Now we just need to succeed at a Wisdom or Divine 7. Okay, so D12 plus 2. Okay, I'm back. Uh, something just happened then. Uh, anyway, uh, what was I doing? I was doing something. Oh yes, so I need a Wisdom Divine 7 to actually close the location. 
So that's a D12 plus two. And I am going to, you know, I'm actually going to do Baphomet. That's going to give us an extra D12 and that should definitely do this with any luck. Okay, boom. That is a pass. So this is also gone. What else was in here? Oh, there was one more. Wait, wasn't this supposed to be a... How many blessings did I get? One, two, three. Ah, oh, three blessings. Oh, that, that blessing there is the one I came with. Okay, I, can, I confused myself for a second then. Whatever, the point is that's another location closed. Bam! Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, lucky I didn't actually press the button. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, still no weapon for her. She's going to do some healing, I think, next to try and get all those blessings back in her hand. Okay, so that was a pretty awesome turn. Uh, there's two monsters here, three monsters here. Okay, well, that is that. We've closed two locations already and we're well on our way. Uh, actually, we're not, pretty, we're not really deep in any of the other ones yet, but we have two spare people. So I will see you guys next time.